Yes, of course, Camilla. Thank hey. you very much. Um, <laughs> and, and nice to be part this time virtually. Um, in fact, uh, here in the back is one of our facilities here in Austria. I'm virtually not there, yeah, but I just wanted to share and see that the people are seeing what kind of stuff we are doing at Magna. So this is the BMW 5 Series, and I've been in that uh, facility this week. I just came back. I'm currently in Vienna. And yeah, it's interesting to have a conference through virtually, but it's still very, very cool to do this. Of nice experience. Of course, and we're very happy that you're part of it. So now it's your turn. Enjoy the presentation from Bernardo Tarellion. Thank you, Camilla. So yeah, uh, the introduction said uh, a lot about me. Uh, and for those that have been part of uh, AI Connect last year. I also already presented last year. Um, when I'm not doing enterprise architecture stuff, I'm taking care or supporting my son the racetrack. Last year it wasn't go karting. This year we are moving more onto the cars, so it's kids are, are growing and the cars as well. Yeah. Um, today I will not talk about racing. Today I will talk a little bit about um, Magna itself. Let me just do something here. Here we go. Um, yeah, for those that don't know Magna, Magna is a large mobility technology company. We are one of the largest car suppliers across the globe with more than 160,000 employees. We have more than 300 facilities across the world in all big three regions. And yeah, this picture behind of me is our largest facility Globally, we produce different and assemble different cars. In this case, it's the BMW 5 Series, but as well other cars like the Mercedes. So if we have a look into the business side, uh, Magna is covering different areas from body and chassis, uh, exterior parts, roof systems, um, powertrain systems, electronics like radar or uh, self-driving systems, mechatronics, mirrors, lightning, LED, seating, and of course, complete car manufacturing like the BMW 5 Series. Yeah. So this is basically the, the business area of Magna. Um, it's a Canadian-Austrian company. The founder is an uh, Austrian that went to Canada. We have in this different uh, product system different also business groups yeah so you will hear me later on where i'm talking about groups magna groups so each of those that you're seeing here are different um, business units yeah and they are quite independent yeah so we have a global it where i'm part of it that is covering all of them and supporting all of them but each of them has its own organization as well so it's a very decentralized business model. Yeah. Good. Today I want to talk a little bit about our um, evolution or maturity of EA practice. We have been doing enterprise architecture formally for now around uh, five and a half, six years. Um, I we started with a very simple approach it's a crawl walk run for those that have been in my session last year it's the same it has not changed so we are very consistent on what we are doing we are currently in the walk phase last year we were passing from crawl into walk so we started with like everyone else doing the basic capability mapping to tools uh, we initially concentrated into the top 200 applications now we have more than 1,000 applications and we have more than 500 business capabilities. Yeah? And this keeps evolving. Yeah? So now where we are right now is we are expanding it, not only looking into capabilities and applications and where the, where the future state will go in each different areas. We are introducing also a very important piece on the overall enterprise data architecture. Yeah? I'm, I'm, I'm always I'm facing the enterprise world because we are not talking about the database architecture or a solution architecture. We are really talking about the data architecture across the whole company. Yeah. 
Right now, we are in a HR transformation. Uh, so the word transformation is very common. So it's nothing else than um, a review of all the HR process across the whole organization from recruiting up to termination of the employee. So we took the opportunity to support that uh, large initiative driven by the business itself to start with our overall data architecture. And I will show you a couple of pictures of what we are doing there. On long term, we want to really go into um, model or kind of uh, define and understand how the future state could look like depending on different um, changes. Yeah, so if we do this, what will happen in that area? Yeah, but that's more into the direction of run. Yeah, on run, we also want to expand the, the data architecture that we are doing in HR right now. We want to expand it to the other areas like supply chain, like finance and manufacturing. Um, this is also a slide that I, I keep using because uh, people tend to misunderstand what an enterprise architecture tool is. We are using Linux, of course. This is, uh, this is a very good tool for what we are using it. It's really the best for us. We are really thinking very lean. Our AA practice is lean, so we are not doing uh, a masterwork of EA. We are very practical focused. We started with the business capability applications. Um, we went now, we are in a kind of stage two where we are looking into data, what, what you see on the right side, and where we want to go further is in business process. We already started a little bit, like a kind of pilot around engineering, so product engineering. However, we want to expand that in other areas as well. Um, we have really clearly set for what enterprise architecture tool is. Yeah, so it's a common repository for business capability application data. So that's the primary focus of it. We are adding, adding this enterprise data architecture. Um, we are doing some kind of heat map and reporting, but what we are not doing is any kind of CMDB stuff or really backend infrastructure information or detailed technology architecture. Yeah, this is because we really focus the enterprise architecture practice into a business first um, direction. Yeah, so we are not looking into the back end like IT architecture, infrastructure stuff, and so on. We're looking into what we are providing to the business. Yeah, uh, it's also not a security risk assessment tool. It could be used for that. Yeah, so I got a couple times the request if we could not use over Linux environment also to do some kind of security risk assessment. However, um, we decided to not do so. It's not that the tool cannot do it. It's because we cannot have, we don't have the capacity to extend it to that level. So let's go to the main topic that I want to talk today. It's about data flows. For those that have Linux, you know the data flows. But the way that we've been doing this was really as part of this HR transformation. This is the first larger business transformation initiative outside of IT that is happening, where we are really providing this not to IT people, we are providing this to HR business people. Yeah? And this is to make sure that they understand what kind of data is created where, what is the path to the destination. And when, when you are talking about HR, you're talking in really on business critical uh, areas like payroll, time and attendance. So if that doesn't work in a manufacturing company, you can imagine that people might not come to work. Yeah. So with, with Linux and, data, and the data flows inside of Linux, we are showing to the business where the data is going through. And it's the business owning the data. Yeah, so they are taking the decision if they are doing it on tool A or tool B. It's, it's just what we are doing is show, just showing how that could go through, where we could have problems. Yeah, so do we have any conflicts, data redundancies? Do we have any area of, of conflict? Yeah. So this is what we are doing right now. 
um, the process that we, we do utilize is a four-step approach. So we have the functional business design, that's number one, where the Magna functional team is working on. We have a large partner that is helping us to, to do this large transformational project. This functional design is based on business process mainly. Yeah? And that business process will then drive what kind of data is within which process. Yeah? That follows into the technical documentation. We have an integration tracker. So as you can imagine, uh, uh, Magna, Magna has more than 160,000 employees, more than 300 facilities, and it's a decentralized model. What happened in the historically is that every division, every location has chosen their own system. Yeah. What does that mean is uh, we have more than 600 HR tools. Yeah. We are talking about more than 200 different payroll systems. Yeah. So it's, it's really a huge environment, very diversified or very fragmented environment. Yeah. So it's, I, I believe that we potentially have almost everything that is in the market around HR tooling, yeah, from SAP up to success factors. And now we're introducing Workday as the core central HR platform from a technical perspective. Yeah. So functional design, technical documentation. And then the third point is that an EA, either myself or one of the guys from the EA team, is sitting into the weekly meetings where they're talking about which system is connecting to which system, what data is going through. Out of these three, we are generating the data flows. Yeah? At the moment, we are doing it on the EA team. The goal is that someone on the functional side is maintaining that when the whole system and solution is go live, and that will be June 2021. Yeah? The data flows reflect the functional design and the technical. Yeah? And that's provided by internal as well as the partner that is an external consulting company. Yeah. So it's not that the EA team is inventing those. We are really taking that information that's very detailed and putting it in a higher level so that business people can digest that. And when I'm talking about business people, I'm talking about the VP of HR of each Magna group down to uh, HR specialist either on the compensation area or absence area. Yeah? So that, that are the levels where we are showing these pictures. This is one of our big one. This is the, the big picture at a high level. Yeah? It's, uh, I will try to zoom in and I hope that you can still see it. But basically what we've done when we are talking um, with business people, what we've done is we reflected the different Workday models. Yeah, we are introducing Workday globally here. And we are showing here which data is going from which model to the other one within Workday, as well to other systems. Yeah? Here on the left side, you have success factors. Yeah? We're using success factors for recruiting and learning mainly and performance management, but that will move to Workday. So as you can see, we have a lot of different toolings um, and we are showing here what is going from where to where. We are using different colors because this is on phases. Yeah? So you see here in, in the blue dotted, it means that in a later stage, that data will go from Workday into success factors. The, the black or gray ones is basically what we are planning to do for Go Live. So, they're using different views to show when what data will go from where to where. I move a little bit down um, to show here, here the various time and attendance and various payroll. So what you see here in the bottom, now in the middle. This is also very interesting because um, in a decentralized model, business model, you have some solutions that might fit better to the global solutions than others. Yeah? And in this case, we have a couple local systems where we need to still do the time and attendance locally. So requesting vacation, requesting leave of absence um, needs still to happen in the local system instead 
of Workday. You see here the model in yellow, that's Workday Absence, where you could do um, vacation requests. Yeah? But there are reasons that we need to do it in that system. So if you look into the data itself, you will see here that compensatory time or PTU accruals are going from the local system up to Workday in this case. And the worker leave of apps and worker time off requests are coming down. However, we might have situations where that's it, that information is going the other way. Yeah, and I will show you an example, a detailed example at the local facility level. Yeah. Um, so this is the big picture. If we are talking at a high level for all locations and all systems in a way that it can be digested. When I'm talking, for example, with a VP of HR, that was the case yesterday, I'm using this picture. Now, when we're talking about what happens with the pay slip information, is it going back? Where is it going back? What's the direction? Um, do we have any reporting? What kind of reporting are we planning now? That's for this HR data hub. Um, are we missing anything in the overall design that might be expected and has not been introduced. Yeah. So this is the really big picture, 10,000 feet level. If we go to a local facility, that's the local facility view. In this case, these are the, the facilities in Mexico. They're using a payroll and time and attendance system called TRESS. And this is a very simplified view of the previous one. So if we go to a to a local facility and we talk with the local HR, the local IT people, we are showing this picture here. So we are explaining them that in this case, uh, worker information, yeah, either it's personal information or company information like position and similar, as well any absence requests will be done in Workday. Yeah, so that, that data flow is going from Workday to the local system, in this case, Tress. And any updated information like earnings, deductions, balances is coming back. Time off corrections, PTU accruals as well. Yeah. So this is this is basically the way to show, okay, time off corrections will happen in the time attendance systems, but that needs to map back to the absence. Yeah. So if someone requested vacation and they came in to work and punched in, that needs to be reflected back to the core HR system, in this case, Workday. Yeah. Here we also show the, the reporting side. So we are using a data hub. The main reason to use the data hub and not do everything in Workday is because we are doing it in phases. Not all MAGA groups are joining this project on day one. Uh, it was decided that the mechatronics, mirrors, and lightning groups and Magna Steyr, that is complete vehicle assembly, are first in the project and all others will come later. That means that we don't have a central reporting place and that's why we are utilizing the data hub for those that are coming later. Yeah. So overall, this is how we are utilizing this. We are talking mainly to business functional people with this. Everyone that we, we showed this is very excited and supporting it. Um, we normally not, we don't use the, the PowerPoint itself. We go into Lina X. I, I like to use my, my touch tablet and show them just clicking in, di going deeper into it using this, uh, the, the, the data um, explorer. And that's, that's really coming very cool to them. In, in fact, um, the external partner is using Excel. We are using Lina X, and the external partner got very impressed on how we are doing this internally. Um, good. So that was my presentation. I hope that I'm still on time. I didn't check the clock, but I think that I catched up the time that was <laughs> planned before. Bernardo, right, you Camilla? perfectly matched the timing. Without clock, you made it perfectly on time. So thank you very much uh, for having you at the EarConnect Days 2020.